development has been booming in Los Verdes and it's quickly becoming a favorite of Verde County locals and visitors alike. In fact, it's so popular that San Rivera has quickly become the most exclusive and expensive neighborhood in all of Verde County, and the square is close behind it. But Highland values don't scare off development, they just change what is viable, and in Los Verdes, Casino operators are quickly and quietly scooping up land from the Myrtle Lopez's. In June, five casino operators submit plans for opening casinos large and small in Las Verdes. And these plans make their way to the town board in late July, where all of the operators present together. They talk about their experience. They promise even more tourists, more glitz, more glamour for Las Verdes. They also dangle the prospect of the casinos generating massive tax revenue. Revenue so significant it could reduce property taxes for all residents of the town. But San Rivera residents warn of organized crime, public intoxication, and general debauchery and implore their elected officials to reject the proposal. But the promise of all-you-can-eat buffets, free drinks at penny slots, and even more unique buildings is just too much for the public officials, and they quickly approve the projects the day they are presented. In today's episode, we're going to be building these five casinos using a variety of assets in very unique ways. We'll begin with the easiest of the builds and proceed to the most complex. And by the end, we'll have a district that's even more eccentric and interesting than it was at the start of the episode. And if you use unique buildings creatively, hit the like button. Or if you like to use them conventionally, hit the like button for that too. And let me know what your favorite unique building is in the comments. Or if you'd prefer, drop an emoji that represents casinos for the sake of engagement. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building Los Verdes in Verde Beach. We've got a good one today. We're going to be building five separate casino campuses, and I'm really excited to get into this, so let's start with today's plan. Today, we're going to be building casinos in these five locations. They're going to range from just plopping an individual building and decorating it to building a large, cohesive campus using unique buildings and assets that complement one another. And for each of these, I'm going to need a name. So if you have a name, drop a name down in the comments with a number corresponding to the casino that you want to have that name. But I don't wanna give a crazy amount of detail today about the plans, let's just dive into building casino number one. We're gonna start with our easiest build and the only one that's actually a casino, the casino from the After Dark DLC. So this is a building that unlocks if you place 5,000 cells of leisure specialization. So it is a lot. This is something that I've done off camera to unlock the building and I can't wait to place it. We're gonna place it right about here, but we've got one issue. That is this road right here. In fact, if we take a look at the casino, it doesn't actually fit right now. So we could orient it in this other direction, but to me, that's pretty unnatural and we can't center it. So I'm going to eliminate this. We'll need to adjust this. And now that we have our empty building pad, I want to plan a couple of things out. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is actually place the asset and then place some of the complementary assets that I'd like to have in the area as well. So I know that I want this centered in this location and you can tell it's not gonna play ball. So that means we're gonna to need to use our trick of rounding off a road so that we can place this. So we know that this will be here. It's gonna be set back a little ways. And then the other idea that I had was placing a couple of hotels behind it. And I feel like that is something that you might expect to see. And now that we have a bunch of great hotel assets, we are absolutely gonna work them in. So the budget hotel is probably the easiest one to fit in. The reason for that is it's not asking us for a lot. So initially I was thinking the city hotel would be great, but I'm guessing that we'll be, it'll be, we'll be hard pressed to level it up. One of the reasons why is the city hotel doesn't have a nature demand. Nature's the easiest one to cheese. So we are gonna go with a couple of these hotels back here. And what I'm thinking is we could do something like this where we have the hotels kind of facing one of these pedestrian roads. The problem is now that we've placed this here, we don't have enough space to actually create our horseshoe in the front so that we can center our casino. So we've got all sorts of little problems that we need to deal with. So let's begin by creating that horseshoe. And I'm gonna begin right away with the road that I think we're going to use. And I need to find the center here. So it's 800 across, 400 is the center. And here we go, we have our little horseshoe there and now we can center this. You can see that it's kind of floating on this and I can slide it around. So we'll try to get that as close to the center as we can. We could really formalize this if we wanted to by adding this connection right here. 
I think we might. Looks very nice. And now I want to add another connection behind this. So here's the thing. I would love for the connection from the Eiffel Tower to just go straight back, but it's too close. But I'm thinking that it might be possible. All I've got to do is shift the road by the Eiffel Tower slightly. So I'm going to delete that road, apparently a tree. <laughs> make sure I have road guidelines on and now I can find that and make my connection. And now I can start adding some of the budget hotels. Now the budget hotel does have a need for shopping and commercial. So what I think we're gonna try to do is to cheese this just a little bit. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is right here, let's add some commercial and some office. And now that I have this checkerboard of commercial and office, I'm realizing that these are not spawning in with the right themes. These are just the general vanilla themes. And what that means to me is we've got to extend the square across the collector. And because I know we're already going out this way, I'm going to extend the district over here as well. Now the trick will be getting these to all zone in and I'm gonna delete this little stub of pedestrian facility and fix this side of the road while we wait for those to fill in. And again, nothing earth shattering here, just more repetition. That's what can make this feel really clean. So these are continuing to fill in. I am gonna decorate a bit right here as well. Nothing all that extravagant, but something to give it a splash of color. And now this should be our best performing hotel, which is why I'm a little bit nervous. And it's not good. <laughs> We're looking at a hotel that's basically failing. So what I'm gonna try to do is just sprinkle in a little bit of activity over here. And this will probably sound profoundly cold, but I'm just not gonna worry about it. <laughs> So, you know, I mentioned this when I went over the DLC when it was initially released. I love the way the assets look. I love the idea of the mechanics, but sometimes it's a bit rigid on its desires. So we will try our best. We're going to try to get there with our landscaping and to get our landscaping. I just basically want this to look like it's functional, even though I know it, ne it won't necessarily be functional. So I'm adding a path right here. I know that you can't actually walk to the building from this. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't make it look like you can't. There we go. And all the buildings have pretty much sprung into place. So now we get to see if this actually had an impact. 58%. <laughs> You know what? This is where I just say I've done my best. At least we're basically breaking even. And I'm guessing if we either boost this up to 21, we actually lose more money. So <laughs> we'll take it down to 19 and then uh, we'll we'll call it a day. That's that's basically break even. I'm, I'm good with that. With that, I think that we've basically decorated this out. This, in my opinion, is a fairly decent way of handling this asset. We've got places to stay. We've got decorations. We've given it some space. We've centered it nicely. We've given it some fountains and it is in a good location, prominently featured on our strip. I'm very pleased. Let's move on to casino number two. For casino two, we're hopping to the other side of the market hall and we're gonna be doing some really unique things with the Africa in Miniature Content Creator Pack. Now this is a content creator pack that I think I was a little bit hard on, if I'm being completely honest with you. I've spent some time familiarizing myself with these assets. They are very eclectic, they are very eccentric, they are very African. And for me, I was struggling with where I would want to use them in Verde Beach. But after giving it some thought, these actually really lend themselves well to really unique places. So here I want to use a couple of really nice assets. We're gonna use that Royal Museum that kind of looks like a bug is on top and we're going to use our communication center. So we'll begin with a loop and I want these two buildings to feel like, basically like they're attached at the rear. So we're gonna just basically place the one building right in front here and the other right behind it and hopefully we can get them so close that they look like they're touching. So these are all found in the unique buildings under content creator packs and then we can filter by Africa and miniature. And we're actually gonna be using a number of these buildings today. The very first one though, right here is the communication center and easy enough, we're just gonna center this right in here. It's nice to get a nice front view of this. And then I like to just really pay attention to the two cells 
that I'm trying to center in between. Now I've got a perfect placement there. Now for our little bug building, I know it has to be at least, I mean, reasonably, I guess I'd like to get it three cells back. That's not gonna work. I'll do two cells and I might even modify the placement of this building. We'll have to see. But let's begin with this and I'll turn on just the grid. And then I threw angle on. And if you do it in that order, you're able to put two roads side by side like that. And that's significant because that is as far as a building can be away from a road before it doesn't work. So this right here with that gap is just fine. What I see is not fine is these are not touching. So I need this to go back another unit. And now the funny thing about this is as I was placing this, I had to be really careful because if it slipped over to the side at all, it wouldn't let me place it because it would hit this building. So this is the one spot where it would work. Now I wish that I could add some sort of breezeway through here. We're gonna have to use our imaginations a bit. This is about as close as I can get them. That said, I don't wanna use our imagination for what this door on the side means. Let's just add some paths and while we're at it, we're just going to go ham. We're going to add pads all over the place. And there we go. Nothing elaborate here. The most challenging thing was getting these buildings to line up. But if you have an idea of what you're looking for, it's not bad. And then again, with the landscaping, what I find to be good is repetition. So just find your pattern and stick with it. And in this particular area, I wanted to honor these buildings being African by working in some of the trees that you would see in Africa. And I think that it looks really, really good. And this would be a casino for somebody. <laughs> somebody would want to go to this. It's not for me, but it's for somebody. And with that, let's move on to casino number three. Our third casino is going to be very unique. I want this to be similar to like medieval times, if you've ever heard of that. So it would be a themed casino, something that feels very out there. But for a certain group of people, this would be their jam. This would be what they'd want to go to. This would be the only attractive place in all of Las Verdes. And we begin this one with our old Market Street, which doesn't seem like it should have a space in this city but it will. So we're not looking at this as an old piece of architecture within Verde Beach that's been here forever. We're looking at this as something that is explicitly fake. And when you look at it from that perspective, you can do a lot with it. So this actually works really, really well with one of our new hotels. We've got this Heritage Hotel, which again, looks like a very serious asset, unless of course you use it right here. Now it seems like it's a Disneyland asset and it's here because we're trying to create medieval times. So there are a couple of different places to put this. Now, I really want to put it back here. This would be my first preference so that you could leave this pedestrianized area and go right into the hotel. I know though that this heritage hotel needs shopping, it needs sightseeing, it needs unique buildings. And we're at least starting to fill our meter when we put it over here. And in fact, I think if we scoot it just even a little bit closer, we may even see yeah, 66% by moving that one cell closer. 66% means that we're not losing money. We're actually making a decent amount, probably bad for the Heritage Hotel, but we can deal with it. So what we'll do is try to conform the roadway network to fit within what we're trying to do here. So using our dirt roads, I'm just gonna run a road back here and I wanna provide as much space in the rear as I'm gonna provide in the front. So I've basically given this two units all the way around and I want this road to swing on over here. So here we go. I had a road right here. I decided to take it out because I think we're gonna decorate a ton with our regular pedestrian paths. But this is the general layout here. And then we just are gonna really be careful while we're decorating. But this one, for instance, I'm gonna come right in the center, then turn on angle. And now I can maintain a really nice distance right there. And I'm one unit ahead. So this is, this is pulled back a little ways. I can't really add another path through anywhere except for back here. And even at that, I think I have to create this first path with just angle on, and then maybe I can get away with one. 
Maybe not. And I think about here is where we do something blasphemous and we add parking <laughs> because it is a modern venue and that would be something that would be contemplated through this process. Now I'm trying to work out how much space I need if I want structured parking in here and I don't even know that it's possible. It's not. I could do across the street. That's not ideal. What we might do is just have a lot right here, a surface lot, which is a fairly bad land use. <laughs> I think that we could all agree to that, but it's all that fits. So we'll go with what we have. And for this, we've got our parking that I tried to make it look like there was maybe some sort of a vineyard attached to the to the castle. I'm not sure that I, I exactly pulled it off, but at some point, it's going to take a chance. And now for the side of this building, I don't want to just leave it like this. We are going to just burn through our nodes today. <laughs> it's apparently what I'm up to. I am concerned about one thing, though. It looks like we've got a bit of terrain. We didn't do anything with it over here. I'm going to try to repair this. We'll see if there's anything that can be done. It's funny. It looks like it's a meter, but that one meter is just brutal. And you can tell as I go through here, it's actually two meters, which apparently is enough to throw off the entire world. So <laughs> what we'll try, I'm going to place this back where I had it. And then it is still deeply unhappy about this location. The only way to truly fix this is to redo portions of our roadway network. I probably wouldn't do it, but for that college path in the center. So this is where we sometimes need to redo things, even if it stinks. There we go. That is probably as good as it gets for us. And it doesn't look crazy here, even though when we have contours on, it looks a little suspect. Not going to worry about it because we can turn contours off. Now I want to connect each and every door to a sidewalk. So this is why this build is a little bit more challenging. You can see that there are more variables and more places where you can run into trouble. That doesn't necessarily mean that you should avoid a build like this. It just means that you've got to be ready to be more patient because I don't believe that any of the things I'm doing right now are difficult. They just require a great deal of patience. The other added benefit of this is every single one of these that I've placed has a light. So if we were to look at this place at night, we have all of these additional lights. Absolutely awesome. So lots of reasons why we're doing this. Now, I want to have fairly basic landscaping through here. And I'm sure you've noticed it already. We are losing a ton of population. It's a death wave right now. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm a little concerned by it, but that's not the focus of today. So I will troubleshoot that and we will, uh, we will take a look at that in a coming episode. go not a ton of detail but enough to make it feel like it is well landscaped and when we take a look not many visitors <laughs> that's unfortunate but we are still whoa we are making a ton of money here we could actually probably increase the price of a ticket because it's that out outstanding here so this worked out absolutely beautifully and now i think it's time to move on to casino number four now for our fourth casino, it might not seem like this is the most complicated one, but we're gonna be using an asset in a way that does make it a bit more complicated. So we're gonna be using some Africa and miniature content creator pack assets once again. But to begin, I want to add a road right here because this will be the main road in front of our casino. I'm gonna come over about three units and go up $80. $80. And then I want to use one of these rounded monuments. So we've got this one right here, which is the Monument of Colossal Heroes. 
This one is very large, so I don't think we're gonna use it here, but there's another one that's a bit smaller, and I think that this will be a very fitting monument to have right in front of our casino. So we're gonna go up on both sides, and then I wanna meet in the middle, and the goal is to have one unit all the way around this monument. Now here's the tricky thing. There is no middle. You see that with road guidelines on and with the grid on, I'm not hitting the middle, I'm going right over the top of it. And the reason for that is we're 180 units across, we can't get 90, it's either 100 or 80. But this is not an insurmountable fix. What we'll do now is turn off grid and road guidelines, Ra rather road length and road guidelines. <laughs> and now you can see I'm sliding around. Now I'm gonna zoom in really close because this monument has a door at the front. And if I get it right in the center, I've hit it right. And now I can turn my road guidelines back on. And there we go, that's gonna be good enough. We will figure out how to fill in some of these gaps and make it look good. Now we're going to add a casino. And again, we are gonna fall back on this same asset set. And we've got this lovely building right here that is really unique looking. The nice thing about this is we could once again, if we had a road going up the side, completely center this. So that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna add a road right here. I'm likely gonna keep this, but if I keep it, it needs to be a pedestrian facility because we're not adding a whole bunch of roadway connections here. That said, you can see it almost perfectly lines up with this pedestrian facility there, so it could be a good fit. And the whole reason I wanted that is now we've got the grid lines on both sides and I can see that this is perfectly centered. And now that we have this in place, I am going to upgrade this to that pedestrian road. Now we will, <laughs> I'll lose half my pet, my paths. We are going to need to adjust some of these after the fact, not just because I did this, but because we're going to want to have some trees and things of that nature. We will cross that bridge in just a moment. We had a very unfortunate series of events. I went to upgrade this road and what I found is that I couldn't do it because the dirt road was way too close. So I had to move this, redo half of the pedestrian paths, but it looks good now. So I am going to upgrade this road, though I know it's going to change for the next casino. I just wanna make sure that anything I destroy will be repaired. And now we've gotta clean this area up a little bit. And this is one of those things that can be frustrating in a vanilla game. We've got this asset that we've spent so much time centering perfectly, looks great but it would really be great if this extended all the way to the end, the, the concrete there. Thankfully, we do have an option now. So if we go into our transport menu and go to airport areas, we now have these small airport aprons and I believe we're gonna be able to just pop a couple of these in place to make it work. Oh my goodness, I, you know, it's a lot of concrete, but it looks super clean, so I am into it. And now we'll just decorate this up a little bit. And there we go. I added a bit of parking to the back and as a result, I ended up removing some of the trees that were in front of the parking lot. It doesn't look as nice, but I do think it was the right call. And I'm really pleased quite honestly with how this has turned out. The one thing I'm not thrilled about is because we removed those trees, it looks a, a little bit unprotected, uh, this neighborhood that is. So I'm going to add a couple of palm trees in between the path and the road. It's a bit of a trick. But if you play around with it enough and you try enough spaces, you will eventually find that one that the game will accept. And that's really good because if I wanted to try to run, for instance, a fence to separate it, the fences end up snapping to the roads. So it just doesn't work. But generally, I've tried to have a, a landscaping pattern here that has incorporates some of the African trees and just in general feels a little bit more unique and I like the way it's turned out. So with that, let's move on to our fifth and most complicated casino. We are going to be building our fifth and final casino right here. It's going to be the biggest one that we've built. It's gonna encompass three different unique buildings, including one of our new city skylines, two assets. So this one is going to require us to demolish a portion of this road that we just built, but I do wanna leave a little bit because we're gonna use 
the guidelines for this. So to begin, we're gonna place an asset right here, but I don't want this to line up directly with the road. Again, we're going to use some trickery, some vanilla trickery to get this building to be a little bit further back. So we're gonna be placing the ziggurat garden and we're gonna say that this is a casino or at least part of this casino complex. So I wanted this set a little ways back so we could center it. There's one unit or one tile behind it and we're gonna add the one in the front as well. This will be a pedestrian facility. We've set it far enough back that the building will believe that it's on a road and that was the whole point. Now for this one, we're gonna add another asset to the other side. So I'm gonna try to line this up with the end of this asset. We're gonna go about 240 units over and then we'll do the exact same thing. Grab onto the other side. Now I've done some measurements up front. This isn't me just being a master <laughs> of, 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 of guessing. I've really kind of taken some time to draw this out and I encourage you to do that sometimes. If you get to a place where you wanna do something really unique, sometimes you just need to grab a pen and paper. And I actually grabbed this whole area and printed it out and drew on it. And for me, that can be a useful exercise. Number one, I like maps. Number two, it can be kind of fun to just get get out a piece of paper and, and draw what you're thinking. And that's a lot of times the way that, that plans actually happen in, in their first iterations. Now we're gonna be adding the pyramid of safety. So we're mirroring that look. And this was the whole reason that I knew the exact width of this because I want this road to wrap around the pyramid of safety. Now, before we move on, we've got a thing here. So this road is now gonna go all the way through here. We see that that's gonna be what ends up happening, but this is not centered. There's one extra tile over here. We're not gonna deal with that. That's not good enough for us. So I just created another one of those loops and now we can get rid of this. It's perfectly centered and I just feel much more comfortable with that. So not something I needed to take care of now, but it's something that I wanted to take care of right away so I didn't forget about it. And while we're struggling <laughs> with all of these pedestrian roads, I'm gonna just upgrade these right away just to make sure that I don't run into any issues. There we go. Now for our next asset or our final asset, our final unique building asset in this we're gonna go for one of our new city skylines treasure hunt buildings and this plaza of transference is so cool it actually can help bring people into your community and it's very flexible with how you can place it so i'm trying to line this up perfectly in the center and i'm doing that because we're going to run a pedestrian facility right down the center and then have a couple of assets on the side now i want to do something interesting I want the roads to wrap around this and look very natural. So I've used the road guidelines to completely line this up and you can see that this mirrors the side of this asset. Now I know that I'm gonna to wanna to do the exact same thing in the top. So I'll use this road up here to create that road. And then I use the guidelines from this road to create the other ends. So now this is perfectly even, very challenging to get these uh, if you don't do it in that particular order, but now that we've done it, you can see that this looks really nice and we're going to take it to the next level. We'll upgrade these and then we'll wrap our one way road around here. And this right here would be a conversation piece. <laughs> here you can go. You can walk into the sunlight and uh, leave the area or come visit it, whatever you want to do. And maybe we'll even extend this all the way through. So after you're done teleporting to the area, you could go and check out a pond because <laughs> that's definitely why you come here. Now, one of the final updates to the base game where we got some updates to some DLCs as well, we got these flower plaza variations. So I want to place a few of these in here and you can see that now we have different colors. Now, I'm thinking that we just get this to match the sandstone that we've been using, but I could be convinced to go otherwise. Why don't we take a look and see how it looks? It's not bad. It's not bad as a different variation. That said, for now, I will switch this to the sandstone. But if you guys have other ideas, if you don't like it, let me know. And while we're over here adding these pedestrian roads, I think that we should upgrade some others as well. And we'll kind of round things off. So this is the biggest pedestrian area I think that I've ever created. Maybe it's one of the biggest ones that's ever been created in the game. I don't know. <laughs> but it's certainly been a fun one. Now we just have to landscape around here because this is generally what I wanted to do. Now, all of this said, 
We could try to add additional things here. We could try to add hotels. The problem is because we have so many unique buildings in such a small area, we're gonna run into a problem where basically no hotels function. So even right here, we've added these couple of hotels. I think you and I both know in reality, this would be a super popular hotel. It would be a much nicer hotel than a budget hotel, but we have 41% po uh, uh, popularity rating and we're losing $7 a week because it doesn't have enough amenities near it. This one, at least we're making a little bit of money, on, but it's still not in a great place. So we're going to need to take some liberties there. We'll say that people are actually able to stay in one of these two assets right here. So let's go ahead and decorate this up. And I was thinking maybe we could add in one of the airport aprons again, but this asset is not a fan. So in light of that, we are going to need to go heavy on our landscaping. And you know what? I'm here for it. The one thing that kind of stinks about this is there's already a bunch of bushes lined up. So we're going to need to do something else. And what I'm thinking that we'll do is basically just add some of these to make it feel like it's a bit wider. There we go. Now, the one thing I was thinking about as I was decorating around here is I'm not really sure if folks are able to walk in on the sides. If we see that, we're going to need to adjust our landscaping a bit. So I'm going to lean on you guys a little bit. If you see some people walking in on the side here, please let me know because I might miss it. Look at how popular this place already is. So much tourism and just generally entertainment value in this area. So I'm going to go through and finish the landscaping and then we will take inventory of what we've done. There we go. And you know, we didn't need to go into this level of detail with the landscaping, but because this is a garden here, I really wanted it to feel lush, especially since there is a lot of pavement here for a garden. But generally, I really like the way that this has turned out. It feels like a place that is a cohesive unit, and that was the main goal. With all of that said, there is one thing that I noticed while all of this was going on. We've got a road here that is not correct, so I'm going to upgrade that real quick. And there we go. So now they're one ways once again, and that puts us in a great place to take inventory of what we've done and have a brief city tour. So in the scheme of things, these builds are very small. In fact, if we look at our district, they take up a 
No, there, it's a decent amount, but it's fairly small relative to the rest of the district. That said, these builds are the types of builds that give your city's character. They're the kinds of places that you remember building, even if you've been building your city for a few years, like I have been with Verde Beach, and they're just really special. So I would highly encourage you to really look at the unique assets and think about the best ways to utilize them. Think about how you can make them feel unique. Don't just fit them in places, make the places around them conform to that building because you can really come up with some interesting stuff if you put your mind to it. And with that, I think that we're gonna leave it here. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this one. I've really enjoyed bringing it to you. If you liked it, please consider hitting the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I wanna thank you so much for your time today. There's a million things you could have been doing. You decided to hang out with me and I really appreciate that. I really can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.